Everything that I brought to the attention to the federal investigators and ultimately to the Department of Justice, I brought internally as well. When I first started seeing things that weren't adding up, where parts were being ordered, and as soon as they were coming in to receiving inspection, they were being thrown in the garbage. They weren't even being inspected. And then they'd turn around, reissue another purchase authorization, reorder the same parts, and they had been doing this over and over with a particular part for years. And their explanation of why they threw away half a million dollars worth of parts was they told me it was an accident that an engineer had determined that the parts were obsolete when in fact they needed them for follow-on contracts and also to support the equipment that was already in the field in the different aircraft that it was installed in. And he says, and, and they told me not to file a report because it's only half a million dollars and we're a multi-billion dollar corporation, so it doesn't matter. Uh, that bothered me. And so I started digging further into some of the other issues that were going on with their inventory and inventory control over the years and came to find out that they weren't maintaining their bill of materials. So that when they would do engineering changes, they were saying that there were parts in the equipment that had already been engineered out as obsolete and installing new parts instead. But when they would charge for those parts, the black box, or if they had to scrap that, they were charging for phantom parts that were no longer in the, the, the black box. I remember when I was contacted by the federal agent in this case. He called me at my home one night as I got home from work and the phone rang and my wife answered the phone and says, well, there's someone on the phone for you. And he took, I took the phone and he, he identified himself and he says, my name is Richard Zott and I'm a special agent for the Department of Defense Criminal Investigative Service of the Attorney General's Office. And I'm aware that you know of some improprieties going on at Northrop there, and I want to talk to you. Well, in those days, this was before cell phones, portable phones, and you know the phone was still attached to a, a phone line. And I took the phone into my daughter's bedroom, and I collapsed on the bed as I'm talking to this federal agent. And I said to him, I can't verify your credentials. I work for a top secret government contractor that's been tasked with building some of the most sophisticated electronic equipment in the country for the defense of the nation. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go into work tomorrow, and they will verify your credentials, and they'll set up a meeting, and I'll talk to you. And he says, well, let me explain to you what's going to happen, Jim. He says, you're going to go to work tomorrow, and you're going to tell them that I talked to you. And let me tell you, they know who I am. And they'll have you in front of their corporate lawyers in five minutes. And they're going to scare the hell out of you, and you're not going to talk to me. And I'm going to come to see you with handcuffs, and I'm going to put you in prison. And I says, well, what time can you be here tomorrow? 